My name is Venizelos Apostolos. I'm a retired Commodore of the Hellenic Coast Guard, Naval Architect and Marine Engineer, graduated from the National Technical University of Athens. And now I am Supervisor of the ISM, ISPS, and MLC Department of the Marine Division of the Hellenic uh, Register of Shipping. Taking the floor, first of all, I would like to thank Safety, Quality, Environment, Marine, Marine Group, Safety for Seas, and especially my friend, Mr. Belokas Apostolos, for organizing the present forum and all the past forums, giving us the chance, gathering all together and uh, talking, changing views, ideas, and uh, innovations, uh, everything regarding our common interest, which is not different from mercantile marine industry in general. Uh, the first speaker said a lot of things regarding my presentation, so I will be very quick. Uh, give me only a few minutes to say something, some words about my company. Uh, we are here. We didn't die, as a lot of people said three years before. We try hard to be better. We try hard to gain again the recognition of the European Union. And uh, we can say that we are one company, 100% Greek. We are in business 94 years. A lot of uh, our uh, people are working now in the big uh, classification societies or a big uh, managing or ownership shipping companies. Uh, we think that all of you know Hellenic Register of Shipping, and I call you to help us if there is not a demand of uh, Ajax uh, class mandatory. Uh, please, uh, we hope that uh, you will do uh, our patriotic, uh, uh, we can say, Greek uh, everything to help each other. Anyway. Now for our presentation, I said that I will be as quick as possible. And regarding the MLC 2006, I can tell you some few words more about our connections and representatives all over Greece and all over the world. Here I cut the regulation for the big ships <laughs> in order to be as quick as possible as I told you. So the MLC 2006, complementing other major international conventions, reflects international agreement on the minimum requirement for working and living conditions for seafarers. Mr. Theohari said about a lot of countries that have not ratified the convention up till now. Only 51 members of the ILO states had already ratified the convention. So the, we can say less than one third of the total member of the states of the ILO. That means there are a lot of work to be done. And a lot of problems are getting now. We see that India, Italy, uh, China, United States, a lot of big and uh, very interesting in the marine industry uh, states have not ratified up till now. What is the problem? As the MLC has not been ratified by all countries, there could be a situation where there can be a different interpretation of the MLC. 
the problem for ship owners is that this could lead to deficiencies and detentions. Ship owners don't want their ship to be detained unnecessarily as they will be incurred and duly losses. So that is now one month. And then what is going on? Some people know, some people try to know or to learn. And we all wait to see how the requirements of MLC will be implemented. In uh, the next uh, minutes, I will show you some real problems that happened already. But the main thing is what we wait for the next year. Cleopatra Dubia Henry, director of the ILO Department International Labor Organization, was sympathetic to the ship owners' concerns and said, this is why all major shipping nations needed to ratify the MLC. That is why that it is important that all countries with a maritime interest ratify the MLC and that governments move forward and adapt the necessary regulatory framework until that it is in place, ship owners don't know what they have got to do, she explained. The biggest challenge I see is to get countries to ratify the convention very quickly and as rapidly as possible, ensuring that they have the regulatory framework so ship owners know what they have to do. That is where I would say the industry had, has been been ahead of many governments. In the meantime, it is a challenge for ship owners, she added. And here is the first detention. I will show some uh, uh, icons only to be uh, a challenge for questions. I will be quick as possible, and uh, it, at the end we can talk about this detentions or other problems. The Liberia flag offshore supply vessel Atlantic Carrier was for 24 hours being detained in Esberg. The Danish Maritime Authority discovered during a control on 3rd of September 2013 that the crew was without contracts. The detention is the first in Denmark as a result of breach of the MLC requirements. And now, here it is an example of the guidelines of, for port state control officers, the guidelines of the ILO. One example that is, uh, say something with these detentions, says, see far as on board, the same ship repeatedly not in possession of valid certificates employment agreements of CFRS with CFR employment agreements containing clauses constituting a denial of CFRS rights. Be careful with the wording. Examples of circumstances that may require detention. So what could you think about the last one? Here, it says that the crew was without contracts. And here it says that this may require detention of the ship. What does that mean? In my opinion, having about 12 years of experience in port state control and inspecting more than 1,000 ships in port state control. This means that in the personal judgment of a port state control, this could be a detention and this could not be a detention. This is very important, I think. I, it is something that we can discuss later. Canada has become the second country 
to detain events under the Maritime Labor Convention. For lack of employment contracts, the same. In this case, ITF said also that there was complaints about the contracts, about the shampoo, toothpaste, money, uh, denial to access a doctor, and so on. There are a lot of complaints, but what happened when sometimes the complaints are unfair? So, what the guidelines for port state control says? When implementing their responsibility, its members shall make all possible efforts to avoid a ship being, being unduly detained or delayed. Mr. Theoharis told it again. I, will not, I don't want to say it again, but the guideline says at all stages of the inspection, the port state control officer should be in mind the obligation to make all possible efforts to avoid a ship being unduly detained. This is very interesting wording for some complaints which are unfair or during the inspection we see that they are unfair. About the countries that ratified the convention after or before, Mr. Theoharis said a lot, so Bulgaria, Canada, Croatia, Cyprus, Denmark, Latvia, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, and Russian Federation, Spain, and Sweden, now they are implementing in a way that they are entitled to contact port state control inspections. In the other hand, Belgium, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Lithuania, Malta, United Kingdom, they are going to be entitled to conduct port state control inspections 12 months after the date of this member's ratification. And when the ship must be detained, when following a more detailed inspection by an authorized officer, the ship is found not to conform to the requirements of this convention, and either the condition on board are clearly hazardous to safety, health, and security, or the non-conformity constitutes, constitutes a serious or repeated breach of the requirement of this convention. I must be quick, sorry. <laughs> Here is another clause that when a rectification plan can be proposed by the company and can be accepted from the port state control, then the ship can be released. The prima facie evidence that the ship meets the requirement is the possession of the MLC certificate and the declaration of maritime labor compliance. Do we have any provisions can be applied for the ship which do not be could not be certified up till now. It's the resolution 17. For one year more, the ILO conference asked from the governments and the port states to let the ship sailing without certificate and without declaration of maritime labor convention. If there are no any evidence that the ship do not conform with the requirements of the Convention. Here in Greece, we are only six persons. We have been certified from the ILO Academy as NMLC trainers. And this was a 10 days course in Turin and let's say only two, three questions in order to make an example for the questions that will be followed. If we apply minimum rest hours as prescribed in the STSW, Manila amendments, are we also in compliance with MLC 2006 requirements? Because they are different, you know. What can be accepted? 
can the term substantial equivalent be used? Here are some answers. And now, try to finish wages, another interesting wording. Equal remuneration for work of equal value should apply to all seafarers employed on the same ship without discrimination based upon race, color, sex, religion, political opinion, national extraction, or social origin. Are we in compliance with MLC 2006 requirements with this? How this requirement can be implemented? Thank you very much. <laughs>